As soon as Harry opened his eyes in the Ravenclaw first-year boys' dormitory on the morning of his first full day at Hogwarts, he knew something was wrong. It was quiet. Too quiet. Harry sat up and looked around, expecting to see others rising for the day. The dorm, empty. The beds, rumpled and unmade. The sun, coming in at a rather high angle. He'd been allowed to sleep until 9.52 a.m., apparently. Despite his best efforts to synchronize his 26-hour sleep cycle to his arrival at Hogwarts, he hadn't gotten to sleep last night until around 1 a.m. He'd been planning to wake up at 7 a.m. with the other students. He could stand being a little sleep-deprived his first day, so long as he got some sort of magical fix before tomorrow. But now he'd missed breakfast, and his very first class at Hogwarts, in herbology, had started 1 hour and 22 minutes ago. The anger was slowly, slowly wakening in him. Oh, what a nice little prank. When Harry found out who'd done this... As Harry stepped out of the bed, he saw a piece of paper attached to his headboard facing outward. The paper said, My fellow Ravenclaws, it's been an extra long day. Please let me sleep in and don't worry about my missing breakfast. I haven't forgotten about my first class. Yours, Harry Potter. The paper was in his own handwriting, in his own mechanical pencil, and he didn't remember writing it. And unless he was imagining it, the words, I haven't forgotten, were written in a different style, as if he was trying to tell himself something. Harry ran around his bed to his trunk, pulled out his pouch, note to myself, and another piece of paper popped into his hand. Harry took it out, staring at it. It too was in his own handwriting. The note said, Dear me, please play the game. You can only play the game once in a lifetime. This is an irreplaceable opportunity. Recognition code 927, I am a potato. Yours, you. Recognition code 927, I am a potato, was indeed the message he had worked out in advance, some years earlier while watching TV, that only he would know. If he had to identify duplicate of himself as being really him or something. Just in case. Harry couldn't trust the message. There might be other spells involved, but it ruled out any simple prank. Staring at the paper, Harry became aware of ink showing through from the other side. He flipped it over. This side wasn't handwritten. Instructions for the game. You do not know the rules of a game. You do not know the stakes of a game. You do not know the objective of a game. You do not know who controls the game. You do not know how to end the game. You start with 100 points. Begin. He had absolutely no clue what was going on. Well, step one was to get dressed and eat. Maybe reverse the order of that. His stomach felt rather empty. He'd missed breakfast, of course, but he was prepared for that eventuality. Snack bars! What popped up did not feel like a box of meal bars. He saw two tiny candy bars, not nearly enough for a meal, attached to a note, and the note was inscribed in the same writing as the game instructions. Attempt failed. Minus one point. Current points. 99. Physical state. Still hungry. Mental state. Confused. And he still had absolutely no idea what was going on, and his brain hadn't even begun to grasp at any hypotheses, like his mental hands were encased in rubber balls and couldn't pick anything up. His stomach, which had its own priorities, suggested a possible experimental probe. Ah... Uh... I don't suppose I could spend a point and get my box of meal bars back. There was only silence. Harry put his hand into his pouch and said, Box of meal bars. A box that felt like the right shape popped up into his hand. But it was too light, and it was open, and it was empty. And the note attached to it said, Point spent. One. Current points. Ninety-eight. You have gained a box of meal bars. I'd like to spend one point and get the actual meal bars back. Again, silence. Harry put his hand into the pouch and said, Meal bars. Nothing came up. Harry shrugged despairingly and went over to the cabinet he'd been given near his bed to get his wizard's robes for the day. On the floor of the cabinet, under his robes, were the meal bars and a note. Point spent. One. Current points. Ninety-seven. You have gained six meal bars. You are still wearing pajamas. Do not eat while you are wearing your pajamas. You will get a pajama penalty. 
And now I know that whoever controls the game is insane. My guess is that the game is controlled by Dumbledore. The note would be in the next place he looked. So Harry looked under his bed. Ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Dumbledore does not control the game. Bad guess. Very bad guess. Minus 20 points. And you are still wearing pajamas. It is your fourth move. And you are still wearing pajamas. Pajama penalty, minus two points. Current points, 75. Well, Harry was screwed. It was only his first day at school, and once you ruled out Dumbledore, he didn't know the name of anyone else here who was this crazy. If the pattern here held true... How can I earn more points? Then he pulled out the drawer. Opportunities to do good are everywhere, but darkness is where the light needs to be. Cost of question, one point. Current points, 74. Nice underwear. Didn't your mother pick them out? And then Harry left the dorm, eating as he went, in search of the Slytherin dungeons. At least, that was what he thought the line was about. Trying to navigate the halls of Hogwarts was like... Mm, probably not quite as bad as wandering around inside an Escher painting. That was the sort of thing you said for rhetorical effect, rather than for its being true. A short time later, Harry was thinking that in fact, an Escher painting would have both pluses and minuses compared to Hogwarts. Minuses, no consistent gravitational orientation. Pluses? At least the stairs wouldn't move around while you were still on them! Harry had originally climbed four flights of stairs to get to his dorm. After clambering down no fewer than 12 flights of stairs without getting anywhere near the dungeons, Harry had concluded that, one, an Escher painting would be a cakewalk by comparison, two, he was somehow higher in the castle than when he'd started, and three, he was so thoroughly lost that he wouldn't have been surprised to look out the next window and see two moons in the sky. I'm lost! Can, um, the spirit of the Hogwarts castle help me? Or something? I don't think this castle has a spirit. Life, perhaps, but not spirit. There was a brief pause. Are you... Harry said, and then shut his mouth. On second thought, no, he was not going to ask the painting whether it was fully conscious in the sense of being aware of its own awareness. I'm Harry Potter. I'm sort of new here. So I perceive, young raven. Where are you trying to go? I'm not really sure. Then perhaps you are already there. Well, wherever I am trying to go, I don't think this is it. So I was trying to go down, but I seem to be going up instead. Would it be fair to say that you don't know where you're trying to go, or even why you're trying to get there? Entirely fair. I'm not sure that being lost in the castle is your most important problem, young man. True. But unlike the more important problems, it's a problem I can understand how to solve. And wow is this conversation turning into a metaphor for human existence. I didn't even realize that was happening until just now. The lady eyed Harry appraisingly. You are a fine young raven, aren't you? For a moment, I was starting to wonder. Well then, as a general rule, if you keep on turning left, you're bound to keep going down. That sounded strangely familiar, but Harry couldn't recall where he'd heard it before. Um, you seem like a very intelligent person. Or, a picture of a very intelligent person. Uh, anyway, have you heard of a mysterious game where you can only play once, and they won't tell you the rules? Life! That's one of the most obvious riddles I've ever heard. No... I mean, I got an actual note and everything, saying that I had to play the game, but I wouldn't be told the rules. And someone is leaving me little slips of paper telling me how many points I've lost for violating the rules, like a minus two point penalty for wearing pajamas. Do you know anyone here at Hogwarts who's crazy enough and powerful enough to do something like that? Besides Dumbledore, I mean. I'm only a picture, young man. I remember Hogwarts as it was, not Hogwarts as it is. All I can tell you is that if this were a riddle, the answer would be that the game is life, and that while we do not make all the rules ourselves, the one who awards or takes points is always you. If it is not a riddle but reality, then I do not know. Four left turns later, he found himself staring down a corridor that ended abruptly in a tumbled mound of large rocks. As if there had been a cave-in, only the surrounding walls and ceiling were intact and made of quite regular castle stones. All right, I give up. I'm asking for another hint. A hint! A hint, you say? The excited voice came from a painting on the wall not far away. Yes! A hint! A hint, I say! Only, not just any hint, I'm looking for a specific hint. It's for a game I'm playing. Yes, yes! A hint for the game! You're Harry Potter, aren't you? 
I'm Cornelius Flubberwalt. I was told by Aaron the Concert, who was told by Lord Weaselnose, who was told by... I forget really. But it was a message for me to give to you. For me! No one's cared about me in... I don't know how long. Maybe ever. I've been stuck down here in this bloody useless old corridor. A hint! I have your hint. It will only cost you three points. Do you want it? Yes, I want it. The darkness can be found between the green study rooms and McGonagall's transfiguration class. That's the hint. And now get a move on. You're slower than a sack of snails. Minus 10 points for being slow. Now you have 61 points. That was the rest of the message. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't suppose you know where the message originally came from, do you? It was spoken by a hollow voice that belled forth from a gap within the air itself. A gap that opened upon a fiery abyss. That's what they told me. Harry was no longer sure at this point whether this was the sort of thing he ought to be skeptical about or the sort of thing he should just take in stride. After getting lost another two times, Harry felt that he was beginning to understand the basic rule for navigating the ever-changing maze that was Hogwarts. Namely, ask a painting for directions. If this reflected some sort of incredibly deep life lesson, he couldn't figure out what it was. A group of six first-year Hufflepuffs were huddled together, looking rather scared, and like they desperately wanted to do something but couldn't figure out what. Which probably had something to do with the group of five older Slytherins who seemed to be surrounding another young boy. Harry was suddenly rather angry. Harry walked past the cluster of Hufflepuffs toward the Slytherins. They looked down at him with expressions that ranged from anger to amusement to delight. Part of Harry's brain was screaming in panic that these were much older and bigger boys who could stomp him flat. Another part said dryly that anyone caught seriously stomping the boy who lived was in for a whole world of trouble. The only real weapon the older boys had against him was his own fear, if he allowed that. Then Harry saw that the boy they had trapped was Neville Longbottom. Of course. Hello, I'm the boy who lived. Oh, did oo want the widow books? Harry's eyes dropped downward and saw some books and papers scattered around the floor. Oh. The old game where you let the boy try to pick up his books and then knock them out of his hand again. Harry couldn't remember ever being the object of that game himself, but he had a good imagination, and his imagination was making him furious. Is this part of some incredibly clever plan that will gain you future advantage? Or is this as pointless a disgrace to the name of Salazar Slytherin as it? The largest boy shoved Harry Potter hard, and he went sprawling onto the hard stone floor of Hogwarts. Harry rose up in what seemed to him like terribly slow motion. He didn't know yet how to use his wand, but there was no reason to let that stop him under the circumstances. I'd like to pay as many points as it takes to get rid of this person. Then Harry lifted his other hand and said, Abracadabra, and snapped his fingers. <laughs> the largest Slytherin staggered back with an expression of shock, a sudden splash of red decorating his face and neck and chest. Harry had not been expecting that. It probably wasn't the best time in the world for one of the Hufflepuffs to start laughing, but that was exactly what one of the Hufflepuffs was doing. Then, Harry caught sight of the note on the bottom of the pan. Hold on! This note's for me, I think. You... You are going to... Look at this! I mean, just look at this! Can you believe I'm being charged 30 points for shipping and handling on one lousy pie? 30 points! I'm turning a loss on the deal even after rescuing an innocent boy in distress. And storage fees? Conveyance charges? Drayage costs? How do you get drayage costs on a pie? In a single terrible motion, the largest Slytherin whipped his wand out to point at Harry, and in the same instant was hit on the other side of his head by another pie. This one, Bright Blueberry. The note on this pie was rather large and clearly readable. You might want to read the note on that pie. I think it's for you this time. Warning. No magic may be used on the contestant while the game is in progress. Further interference in the game will be reported to the game authorities. Harry thought that he might be starting to like this game controller. Look, you want to call it a day? I think things are spiraling out of control here. How about you go back to Slytherin, and I go back to Ravenclaw, and we all just cool down a bit, okay? I've got a better idea. How about if you accidentally break all your fingers? 
How, in Merlin's name, do you stage a believable accident after making the threat in front of a dozen witnesses? You idiot! What are you doing with my Hufflepuffs? And my fine student, Harry Potter! Into Harry's field of vision stalked a dumpy little woman with messily curled gray hair and clothes covered with dirt. Professor Sprout! Uh-oh. That's right, it was her class I missed this morning. He pretended to use the killing curse on us! Yes, quite a terrible threat from an eleven-year-old boy. Though still not something you should ever dream of pretending, Harry Potter. I don't even know the words to the killing curse, and I didn't have my wand out at any time. I suppose this boy hit himself with two pies, then? He didn't use his wand. I don't know how he did it, either. He just snapped his fingers, and there was pie! Really? Then we have a clear case of accidental magic from a boy who felt threatened, and the rules plainly state that you are not to be held responsible. As for you... Three points from Slytherin, each, and six from him. Don't you ever meddle with my Hufflepuffs again, or my student Harry Potter either. Now, go. She didn't have to repeat herself. The Slytherins turned and walked away very quickly. Thank you very much, Mr. Potter. Seven points to Ravenclaw, one for each Hufflepuff you helped protect. And I won't say anything more. Harry blinked. He'd been expecting something more along the lines of a lecture about keeping himself out of trouble and a rather severe scolding for missing his very first class. Maybe he should have gone to Hufflepuff. Sprout was cool. And she left, walking along the hall that led to the green study room. How did you do that? I can make anything I want happen just by snapping my fingers. Really? No, but when you're telling everyone the story, be sure to share it with Hermione Granger in First Year Ravenclaw. She has an anecdote you might find amusing. He had absolutely no clue what was happening, but he wasn't about to pass up the opportunity to add to his growing legend. Oh, and what was all that about the killing curse? The words to the killing curse are... Evada Kedavra. I see. Well, that's the last time I ever say that before snapping my fingers. Sorry, but can you remind me of your name? I'm Ernie McMillan. Honored to meet ya. Pleased to meet you. Skip the honored thing. Um, if everyone would excuse me, I have something to say to Neville. I suppose you're going to say I should have been braver. Oh no, nothing like that. It's just, um, something the sorting hat told me. There seemed to be something blocking Harry's throat. It was like Harry had to manually take control of his lips and produce each syllable individually. I'm sorry for what I did, um, the other day. You don't have to be gracious about it or anything. I'll understand if you just hate me. This isn't about me trying to look cool by apologizing or your having to accept it. What I did was wrong. Why did you do it? Why does everyone do that to me, even the boy who lived? Harry suddenly felt smaller than he ever had in his life. I'm sorry. It's just, you looked so scared. It was like a sign over your head saying victim. And I wanted to show you that things don't always turn out badly. That sometimes the monsters give you chocolate. I thought if I showed you that, you might realize there wasn't so much to be afraid of. But there is. You saw it today. There is. They wouldn't have done anything really bad in front of witnesses. Their main weapon is fear. That's why they target you, because they can see you're afraid. I wanted to make you less afraid, to show you that the fear was worse than the thing itself. Or, that was what I told myself. But the sorting hat told me that I was lying to myself, and that I really did it because it was fun. So, that's why I'm apologizing. I think you're going to be really cool someday. But right now, you're not. Harry swallowed the sudden knot in his throat and walked away. So, how am I doing in the game? A sheet of paper flew over his head as if someone had thrown it from behind him. The note said, Points for style, 10. Points for good thinking, minus 3 million. Ravenclaw house points bonus, 70. Current points, minus 2,999,871. Turns remaining, 2. Minus three million points? That seems excessive. I want to file an appeal with the game authorities. 
Another note flew over his head. Appeal failed. Asking the wrong questions, minus one trillion points. Current points, minus one trillion two million nine hundred ninety nine thousand eight hundred seventy one. Turns remaining. One. Harry gave up. With one turn remaining, all he could do was take his best shot, even if it wasn't very good. My guess is that the game represents life. A final sheet of paper flew over his head, reading, Attempt failed. Failed, failed, failed. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee